He's, he's mostly got it right. He does this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the way, the way you normally do it, if you, if you were to go down in the motion control days to image G, you would see a white, a smoky white plastic hemisphere. And um, it was your star field. The inside of the hemisphere was painted black with black cell animation paint. And they had a PA or an artist with a, a needle prick through the paint, the little, the little stars. It was a work of art. It was beautiful. It's a hemisphere because you put your, your snorkel cam in there and it pivots any what away. You, you get these actual sweeps of a star field. So I thought, okay, we've got a big white piece of, of, of plexiglass. I'm going to do the same thing. I painted it with black latex house paint. And when I went to, to try to scratch stars in it, you got cat claw scratches. It looked awful. But what I hadn't realized was I painted it quickly. I put it outside in the Alabama heat to dry. It had foamed. And when you pushed the camera in, and I mean pushed it all the way in to a quarter of an inch, the, the lens was a quarter of an inch. It was almost touching this piece of plexiglass. The foam looked like galaxies. It was the most <laughs> gorgeous thing you had ever seen. And it was one of those things where I said, all right, I'm going to turn, I, I backlit it. I turn out the lights in the studio. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my artwork and start scratching. The scratching isn't working, but I start to notice these tiny little microscopic dots. I thought, I wonder. And we put the camera on the dolly, dolly forward, and it was, it was gorgeous. And that's what we use to this day. I still have it. I stole that piece of plexiglass from the place where I work. And it's in my garage now. <laughs> Anybody seen Terminator 2? Yeah. You, know, you know, there's a, there's a scene where uh, the T-1000 walks through the, um, the metal bars of the jail or whatever it is. And you hear that sound in the background as it's walking through. It. And the um, sound designer had to come up with that sound for that. He was feeding his dog one night. <laughs> Put up the can of dog food. <laughs> there it is, or, or my favorite, the opening of the uh, the top of the, uh, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. It's a guy's toilet lid. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, God. The ball rolling is a mic, a mono mic, taped inside a wheel well and let the car back in neutral down a gravel driveway. Wow. Wow. That's Paul Jason. And remember, sound is the thing that, that you can keep, you can do big budget <laughs> stuff. And I mean, you know this, but you yeah. can, that's the one place where you can get big budget because A, you can download just about any sound you want off these wonderful sound libraries. You can go out and make mm -hmm. any sound you want pretty much. And it's, it's, there's almost no limit. Where the picture, you're kind of limited. So yeah. and the important thing that we, we discussed in this last uh, group in here is how important sound is for your low budget show because it will make or break your low budget show, it'll either sound like a low budget show or it won't. So go out there and hire yourself uh, somebody that, that knows sound. Don't just you know pick a production assistant or whatever and say, hey, hold this boom mic. <laughs> Have you ever noticed on YouTube, you can watch the worst old VHS 10 times copy piece of crap and see what it is as long as it sounds good. But the other way around and you'll turn it off. It's annoying as hell. More questions, guys. Okay. Um, nowadays, with the internet and everything, I was wondering if any of you guys still think that festivals are still an uh, important part oh, of Oh, absolutely. 100%. More than ever. Because now Netflix won't even let, they won't even consider putting you, your mm -hmm. film in Netflix unless you've won or at least gotten some kind of notoriety through film festivals. And part of that comes from the fact that the, the studios, this is the part that pisses me off, the studios have gone into Netflix and said, uh, we don't want you letting anybody in. We've got to make a deal where you're still keeping us exclusive and, and you just let certain people in because you're ruining the system for us. So then that's what happened. So uh, you've got to do film festivals. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that too. Yeah, just um, basically these days because the dissemination, you know, everybody in this room could have or, or could definitely could have put something up on YouTube a film festival will distinguish you. They really will. Uh, just talking, you know, from, you know, again, that's, everybody's on YouTube. But when you make the cut, if you make the cut at a film festival, uh, just folks I've talked to, it uh, makes a world of difference. It really does. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sorry. Um, you know, film festivals are important in the same way that Dragon Con is important to um, uh, people who enjoy sci-fi and fantasy. These are the people who make the effort to come and be with others and, you know, experience the same thing. 
people who love films go to film festivals to watch films. Um, and so to be rewarded being in a film festival actually does mean something. And to have people who want to go see films see your film, you know, that is still something. It's worth it. So you got a good story. you got a good script. And uh, what's next, Tom? Go stop talking about it and do it. Pick up the camera and go shoot the first thing. I mean, just go do it. Too many people talk about it, you know? Because you'd be surprised what's inside you that, that you will give birth to that you didn't know that you had, you know, the, the talent that you had to do it. My first film, my first feature, is terrible. I won't even tell you what it is. If you know it, great. I won't give you an hour and a half back. But, you know, you know but uh, I heard a friend of mine in the back of the room who's a filmmaker that uh, he went to the film festival. He played it on a film festival. The only film that I think sucks played it on a film festival. And... Uh, Afterward, he and his buddy told me later they were talking about the fact how bad it was. But they looked at each other and went, but we're douchebags because we've been trying to make movies forever. And we can't kill a man. So, you, and I, I did it because somebody came to me and said, hey, I've got a little money. You got any idea what to do with it? And I said, give me the money. We're making a movie. And I made a movie. And it's, you know, and it's, I still look at There's things about it that are great. And it taught me, trust me, film school, I don't care how much money you spend on film school, your first feature film will teach you ten times as much. It, it, even your first short will teach you ten times as much. It'll mainly teach you what not to do, but those are the things you have to keep learning. Every film I've done, even the, my last one, which I actually had a crew that was knowledgeable, and we still learn what not to do every day. Your shorts teach you how to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. I, I would say that um, every movie starts with tremendous passion. You get a vision, you get jazz. I mean, I'm sure all you independent filmmakers in here have done that, or people that have it. And it winds up being a desperate attempt just to get something of you know done and finished and out uh, without compromising whatever it is you had in the first place you were thinking of. And so um, one thing I would heavily uh, just again just like these gentlemen here are talking about how um, you know you got to learn by doing. Um, in my own uh, other profession, I've had to learn that the hard way too. Um, that. Uh, Tell them what you do. Oh, I'm a criminal defense attorney. But, um, <laughs> I know, I'm not making it out of your life. Um, but yeah, you know, just analogous, the first time you step into a courtroom for real and you have somebody depending on you, that there's no substitute for that. Well, also, when you talk about making a film here, in, until you go through and make the mistakes, there are things I could not possibly imagine uh, that come through. So that's why, again, if I had a little bit of piece of advice, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, uh, just as... No, it's keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I, I get called stupid so much that I just sort of uh, go into the... Uh, yeah, well, I, I learned that phrase in the Army. Mm -hmm. Anybody read uh, Robert Rodriguez's book, um, The Rebel Without Proof? Yeah. All right, then you know, if you're in this room, then you must have a passion. You go, it's right there. Okay. He, he, uh, if you read that book, when, when Robert was in grade school, he would turn, he was sitting in class, he would turn his book sideways, and in the margin, he would draw a cartoon character. On the next page, he'd draw a card. By the end of the day, he had a flip animation movie going on in the corner. The, that's passion. I mean, the people that I know that are really successful in this business had that passion when they were little kids, you know, and, and it grew into that. I mean, this is before, I mean, writing in his book was before his Super 8 camera and then before video, and, you know, now he's got, you know, uh, but that's the passion, I guess, is my point is, it's a, it's a, uh, you have to have the passion, you know. I, uh, I read that book 10 years ago, and uh, that's what made me make God of Vampires, and it made me stick with it for 10 years to make that's it, true. so. I'd buy that. How many people in this room are budding producers, not directors, but producers themselves? And then why? <laughs> uh, why aren't you producing our film? Well, no, what I said in the, last, uh, in the last panel was, if you're producers, find a director that you want to work with. Find somebody. Craigslist is great. You know, find a, find a director. You know, find a DP that's in school. You know, you can, you can uh, get a DP that's, that's in school that wants to work on a project that probably doesn't have the creativity that you do as far as Filmmaking or storytelling, guys look up, use Craigslist, use uh, Classifieds, use Facebook, whatever it is that you can, and just get together. Start working with a whole bunch of different people that have different goals, but the, the central goal is all to make a movie. When we did Loaded Dice in uh, Pittsburgh, 
My DC was a, a guy who just got out of, out of uh, uh, Art Institute, and he had no reel to show. He just had, a, like, I think a music video maybe that he did. But I could tell the guy was, like, really into what was going on. And we had four lights. And this movie doesn't look like it has four lights. It looks like we had a lot of stuff going on. But you get five. Uh, oh, you get one. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I mean, but at the same time, we had a heat. This guy brought with him. He shows up on the first day, with, and we brought up the lights. And he, he's got with him gels and, and, uh, and diffusion and flags and all this stuff that, that made life easy. And then you've got to find somebody with that mentality. And once you've got it, I think Brad Garrett. He doesn't need people. Bill Burton. Oh, well, I've worked with Bill several yeah. times. There's a long, long story, bunch of stories there. <laughs> You remember Bill from Bloodbath, the DP? Well, oh, well, yeah. uh, the shots looked like they were shot in the bathroom with a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes you sometimes said that, not me. <laughs> well, how about this? What is the, um, this is a question I ask a lot, and I think it, 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 it's relevant here. What is the one resource you guys are having the hardest time coming by? Money. Finding. Great place. Besides money. money. And if the answer is money, you don't need to be in this business because right. you're not thinking right. Time is a direct substitute yeah. for money. You can do anything with enough time. I'm living proof of that. Yeah. <laughs> so All right. What, what, what would be the uh, my question to that, or answer, or whatever, would be basically how do you connect with your audience? How do you what, what ways have you guys been successful in taking your genre movies, whatever they are, vampires or machete or that kind of thing? Well, he's still an attorney, and I have a day job. You mean what? Would it, would it making the movie to connect with the audience? What uh, what method? Once you have the movie done. He used to oh. Be creative. There's no one okay. way that there are venues. Festivals. Festivals. We were just talking about festivals. Let me reverse engineer that question, though. Obviously, something that's not good. When I say not good, I'm not speaking of story. You made the best story ever. We talked about how good that is. But the one thing you need to remember along this course is there's no excuse for having bad actors. And when you have bad actors, you can have the best story ever, but you'll end up making festivals because they're looking at that. So make sure when you start off this, this trek to getting it done, and then I'll answer your question on the end of this. There are so many actors out there that are good. Take your time finding them. Don't just grab the first person that says yes. That's the problem with my whole first film. Story's not bad. I was so happy somebody said yes that I was just, I didn't dare want to question them, and they were like, yeah, you got the job. I love you. Next movie, I'm like, screw that. We, we cast for weeks, and I got good actors. So, but that's the, that's the key to getting to the end of that, and then when you get to the end of making the movie, then you've got to connect with them through. Um, you're not really trying to connect with your audience because you're trying to connect with a distributor who's going to get you your audience. Now, luckily, the the, the t- climate is changing. It is turning out now to where the bigger distributors are going by the wayside because they can't sell movies. And the reason they can't sell movies is because people are either making movies for under a million or over twenty million. There's almost no gray area now. There's still a few. But and the lower ones don't have names in them, and they can't sell them. So we're finding that now it's it's almost easier to four wall your own picture and go out there and set up a website and go to conventions and let get people you know who want to. You can you could sell at twenty bucks a copy. You could sell ten thousand bucks for it just going to conventions. I guarantee you in a year. But but it's if you connect with the audience before you even make the movie. It's not about trying to do it after you're done. I mean. And that's that's uh, story structure. Okay, you have to have a structure that's uh, that's interesting. Um, I sat with Quentin Tarantino and I said, you know, it seems like that you write all your scenes on index cards. You throw them up in the air, whatever way they land, you bring it up in there. But that's not true. He is a master at structure. Uh, Reservoir Dogs. If you watched Reservoir Dogs in chronological order, it's just a typical. It's a bank robbery movie. You know, it's the way he presented it to you, the, his structure of presenting that movie, the way it was written, with you know a guy bleeding in the backseat of a car. Well, you want to know what happened to this person. If you shot chronologically, it could be the most boring thing there was. Uh, Pulp Fiction. He kills Travolta off like uh, two thirds of the way in the movie, and then brings him back for a happy ending. He warps time, and that's what structure is. Your structure is what makes your story interesting. How it's presented, I mean, in the order of the that's, that's, that's coming at you. Let's, let's talk so about Christopher Nolan morning. for a minute. I mean, oh, God. Oh, Memento. God. <laughs> talk about really messing with your mind as far as, as, as the order. But, of the movie. but that makes you. I think, if the, I think if there's rules, there are no rules. First of all, but if there was some some criteria that, that established way that makes something interesting. I think your first your first mindset is how do I make the audience want to know what happens after this scene or want to know the movies that you like and you find interesting. Think about it when you watch them. 
you want to know what's going to happen in the next scene. You want to. It's not like you're sitting there and you have to be there for it. You know, you really want to know.